Hello, my name is Jim DeCipio and I have served as Village President since 2005. Welcome to the 10th Annual State of the Village Address, where the Village provides an overview of the Village highlights and accomplishments over the past year. This presentation was originally provided in person to a live audience on the evening of November 1st at our Village Hall. For the purposes of making this information available to the public, I have the pleasure of providing the State of the Village Address for you now as part of a program with the assistance of LTTV. This presentation includes an overview of the items of interest in each of the village's departments, and I will also provide some updates from our partnering taxing bodies of LaGrange Park Library and the Community Park District of LaGrange Park. So now let's get started. I will first provide an overview of village management. Julia Cedillo has served the village as its village manager since 2011, and she is responsible for managing the day-to-day -day operations of the village, as well as executing the policies as set forth by the village board and president. In conjunction with the village board, who decide the policy and set the vision for our community, we have dedicated staff who work hard each day to provide the best possible services for our residents. As I reflect upon the past year, the village continues to progress forward at a time when the environment around us is ever changing both at the state and national level. While we have these challenges, we are able to forge ahead because we have dedicated and supportive leadership, committed organizations, and an engaged community, all enthusiastic about maintaining a high quality of life in LaGrange Park. Our focus is primarily planning for greater long-term sustainability and I think this focus will come through in this presentation. In developing this presentation, we noticed that a theme came to mind, and that theme is being proactive in service to community, providing the best possible services and within available resources. We have a limited staff, so we are always looking for ways to do things better and smarter. So I want to draw your attention to a couple of areas you will be hearing about tonight. The water system planning and improvements. We recently completed a comprehensive study on our system's infrastructure and fee structure, which resulted in an increase that I am sure some folks are not happy about, but was done to meet the needs of our residents right now and for tomorrow. We manage our very old and aging water system with excellence and need to do that into the future as this is our community's most critical infrastructure. This is the delivery of our potable water. We continue to proactively plan road improvements, finishing off the bond work, but also planning the next areas for improvements with a pavement condition study. We continue to work on our highly interactive and integrated community policing program, which aims to build trust and work in concert with residents in preventing crime in our community. We are also looking towards technology to find ways of being more efficient with our time as we have limited staff. We have done so much in advancing our technological and record systems with consolidated dispatch and we are working to further our abilities and streamline our functions. Our paid on call fire department continues its preparedness to the community as a result of a focus on training and its work in mutual aid in emergency response. We are so fortunate to have these dedicated individuals and we will hear more about that later. We continue to focus on code enforcement with a new contractor on economic development with a new study soon to be underway with a company, SBS Friedman, so stay tuned for that. And finally, in finance, we will soon embark on the process to purchase new financial software to ensure the best system to manage financial operation with enhanced security measures. This is just a preview of what is to come with tonight's presentation. These are always the village works to be proactive to better serve our community. Everything we do as a village starts with residents in mind. This includes feedback from the residents, which helps form a vision and the village board and president are responsible for articulating that vision for the community. It is then staff's role to assist in achieving it. On a day-to-day -day basis, this includes executing and enforcing the policies and programs as determined by the board, assisting in the development of policies, by providing options and recommendations, working together on strategic planning, service delivery accountability, team building in terms of commitment to customer service, training and capacity, 
and the communication of information to residents, elected officials, employees, other taxing bodies, legislators, and anyone who will listen. All together, we have our work cut out for us, but it is the work which we are all involved and in, so passionate about. The Village is a full-service local government providing services through six departments, administration, finance, building, public works, fire, and police. We have 42 full-time employees and about 80 part-time employees, many of whom are paid on-call firefighters and residents. We also have a part-time elected village clerk, Amanda Seidel, whose duties are prescribed by state law and who is the keeper of the corporate seal and all records. Here's a list of village employees. The work they do each day is amazing. Some you see and much more that you don't, but all in an effort to serve the community as they truly care. The achievements of the village would not be possible without the countless volunteers who provide service. We cannot build community alone. Here is a list of the advisory groups that provide recommendations to the village board or have specific authority as determined by state law. Each has a team of dedicated members and we are so grateful for their service. The Board of Police Commissioners, duties prescribed by state law. The Sustainability Commission, established per ordinance and local authority. Commercial Revitalization Committee, the subgroup of the Village Board. Traffic Safety Engineering, established per municipal code and local authority. Our Youth Commission, established per municipal code and local authority. Planning and Zoning Commission, duties prescribed by state law. And Police Pension Board, duties also prescribed by state law. I would like to extend thanks to our community partners. The annual address is a time to reflect and celebrate, and it is time to be mindful of one another's issues achievements and goals so that we are all better able to work together in the future. Taking stock and being proactive allows us to better anticipate challenges, react more quickly, and look for opportunities and forge ahead in a possible manner for our community. Our Public Works Department is responsible for the maintenance of the public right-of-way in our community, which encompasses streets, street lighting, sidewalks, public parkways, and our urban forest. This department is also responsible for ensuring safe and reliable provision of potable water, handling sewer concerns, and upkeep of the vehicle fleet for all village operations. To balance these requirements effectively, the village employs nine people, a director, one foreman, one water operator, one mechanic, and five maintenance workers. In addition, one part-time office manager and three to four seasonal employees. We have a new public works director as of December 11th. His name is Rick Grady. He comes to us from the village of Montgomery and before that, Bensonville. And before that, he was our employee for over 18 years serving in the public works department and also as a paid on call firefighter. Welcome back, Rick. In the last year and under the direction of our previous director, Brendan McLaughlin, public works performed all the usual services you have come to expect road salting, snow plowing, leaf and brush collection, sidewalk replacement, road repaving, and filling many potholes along the way. A new truck was purchased for use in the water fund to replace a van which was 15 years old. In coordination with our contractors, we have removed 134 trees to date. Most were ash. We are proactively injecting trees in strategic locations in an effort to save them from the emerald ash borer. During the year, the village did plant 115 new trees. Public Works maintains an inventory of all parkway trees when they have been removed in a planting list for the replacement of those trees. Trees removed this year are scheduled for replacement in 10 or 11 years. For residents who want a tree sooner or who would like to select which species is planted, we do offer a resident purchase program where we extend our wholesale prices during the spring and fall planting programs. The resident covers the tree cost and the village pays for the delivery and the planting. Residents wanting to choose a specific tree can work with local nursery for purchase and planting on their own. We do ask that before purchasing a tree, the resident contact the Public Works Department to clear the species and location for planting. In those cases, all costs are paid by the resident. 
This year, Public Works finished a th three-year program to upgrade the ratio read equipment to allow for better accounting in the village water system. The original outdated electronic equipment was installed between years 2000 and 2002. The new devices are able to determine high water usage, keeping leaks to a minimum, and perform hourly reads effectively, reducing water loss rates. The state of our water system is definitely facing challenges. Roughly one-third of our water mains were installed in the 1920s or earlier. Another 50% of the water mains are closing in on 70 years. On top of that, between 2012 and 2015, the City of Chicago raised wholesale water rates by 90%. In response, last year the Village worked with a consulting firm to complete a water and sewer rate study. The purpose of the study was to review the long-term operation and infrastructure requirements of the Village's water and sewer systems and provide rate options that will provide the necessary funding. The Village Board reviewed the recommended rate plan and approved the first rate increase effective June 1st. The rate plan is projected to allow for a consistent repair and replacement program of existing water and sewer mains without requiring additional debt. The entire study is available on the Village's website. The first priority for new water main is a portion of LaGrange Road south of 31st Street and then 31st Street from LaGrange Road to Barnsdale. The most recent water main breaks on these streets have been a result of failing pipe structure. The breaks were not due to a freeze-thaw cycle or shifting earth. The condition of the pipes show very high levels of corrosion. Additionally, the valves in this area are as old as the pipes and do not provide for very effective shutdowns when crews are trying to fix the brakes. This requires additional valves to be closed and thus impacts even more residents being without water. It also increases the risk to workers trying to perform the repairs. The increase in water rates will go entirely to replacing these aged water mains and other mains in future years. On the positive side, the crews remain vigilant at monitoring work water loss in the system. Even with the very old pipes, we are able to do leak detection surveys and address small leaks before they surface. This has our unaccounted water loss less than 10%, which is far above average for Northern Illinois communities. The voters approved the $10 million referendum in April of 2016 to repave streets. We have now completed all streets originally identified for repaving with the exception of Brewster, which is scheduled for next year at the Village of LaGrange installs their new water main. Due to many of the streets coming in under budget, we anticipate repaving an additional 12 blocks in 2019. We have also solicited proposals to complete a pavement management plan that will assess the condition of all streets and alleys and provide recommendations related to ongoing maintenance to protect the investment in the newly paved streets and extend their useful life. The plan will also prioritize streets to be resurfaced now that all streets identified in the bond referendum will have been resurfaced. Going to our police department. Our police department is led by Chief Ed Rampa, a 20-year veteran of the police department. In keeping with LaGrange Park's rich tradition of providing a high quality of life for its residents, I am proud to report that our community has been recognized for the third consecutive year as the 19th safest community in Illinois by SafeWise, a well-respected nationally recognized home security company. In 2018, our department welcomed a new addition to our police team. Aaron Hansen is our new probationary police officer. Aaron graduated from the Cook County Sheriff's Department Training Academy in August and will be completing our field training program with field training officer Jennifer Welk in mid-November. We are proud to share that Sergeant Joseph Rank, a 17-year veteran of the Grange Park Police Department, received special recognition for the second time in his career for providing life-saving assistance to a resident. In this instant, he administered the opioid antagonist Narcan to a subject, thus reversing the overdose the patient was experiencing. We are proud of Joe's efforts on behalf of this individual in our community as a whole. The police department's commitment to community outreach and engagement initiatives continues we recently completed a third successful session of our Citizens Police Academy that enjoyed the wholehearted participation of several residents interested in learning about our agency and how it functions. Our intention to provide both spring and fall sessions of the CPA enthusiastically continues. Furthermore, 
We are exploring a joint effort with LaGrange Park Schools to offer a junior police academy in 2019. This exciting new program will be intended for children ages 12 through 17. Additional information will be provided as planning progresses. The LaGrange Park Police Department recognizes the integral positive role that law enforcement can play in the lives of local youth. Our commitment to safeguarding the well-being of our community's most precious resource, its children, is paramount to us. The department continues to participate in the Spark Plug Program, an initiative that joins officers with at-risk students from Park Junior High School and their families. In this innovative program, officers assist students with schoolwork, engage in other non-academic activities, and share meals with their partners. In a similar vein, our Adopt-a-Cop program continues to be one of the more popular programs in which our personnel are involved. It consists of officers from the LaGrange Park Police Department being adopted by specific grade levels as their officer for the school year. Each month, adopted officers talk to their respective classes in half-hour sessions that address issues such as pedestrian and bike safety, Halloween safety, respecting the property of others, and other areas of concern or interest in which affect our youth population. Perhaps the most beneficial aspect of this program is our ability to get to know our students as individuals and for them to get to know us on a more personal level as well. The Shop with a Cop program provides our staff with a deeply meaningful opportunity to provide gifts and resources for economically disadvantaged families that would otherwise go without during the holiday season. Additionally, the police department assisted local schools with hard and soft lockdown drills in an effort to enhance safety in response to irregular occurrences in or around schools should they ever occur. Police department personnel also work closely with public library personnel to maintain an intruder alert training program for staff and a missing child protocol has also been created to ensure the continued safety of the library's young guests. We continue to participate in the National Drug Take Back Initiative provided in conjunction with the Drug Enforcement Administration and the Partnership for Drug-Free Lions Township. Additionally, the department maintains a drug drop-off box in the lobby in which unused medications may be deposited for proper and safe disposal. Our community and police department personnel alike continue to benefit from grassroots efforts our officers engage in on a regular basis, including coffees with the chief and staff, vacation home watch, block party attendance, special group tours of the station, and much, much more. A program for which we are especially proud as an agency is National Night Out, an annual event held in early August that encourages positive relationship building between first responders and our residents. Judging from the incredible turnout, this year's event was an overwhelming success and featured a newly added laser light show. Sergeant Matt Fellers took the reins as a new coordinator for this important event and did a spectacular job. I would also like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of our trustees, Village Clerk Amanda Seidel, community sponsors, volunteers, and all village personnel who contributed so meaningful to the success of this event. We continue to encourage the community to remain informed and connected with the police department through subscription to our online weekly safety bulletin, which is emailed to the residents every Friday afternoon. This bulletin provides safety tips and relevant informational segments regarding local criminal activity, which may be of concern to our residents. We have also redoubled our efforts in encouraging safety bulletin subscribers to sign up for code red emergency notifications if they have not done so already. In October of 2018, LaGrange Park premiered a new online overnight parking program in conjunction with Western Springs and LaGrange. The new Frontline Public Safety Solutions Parking Program provides an unprecedented level of functionality and ease for residents seeking to secure, register their vehicles for overnight parking approval via the Village website. It should be noted any residents who do not have access to computers may still call the Police Department's non-emergency line during business hours at 708-352-2151 or LTAC after hours at 708-352-2059 to have their vehicles added to the approved parking list. 2019 promises to be another proactive year for the police department. 
Staff has begun working with the implementation team from Municipal Systems Incorporated to set up the databases that populate the new software programs, which will track citations issued by our officers, as well as our recovery of past due fines. On-site training will occur the week of November 12th, and we anticipate our go-live date will be in January 2019. We continue to research the viability of reintroducing local administrative adjudication. We are also working with local debt recovery to recover outstanding citations and late fees on behalf of our residents. And finally, we are very excited to be undergoing an application process that will lead to the establishment of a new eligibility list of police officer candidates for the village, which we expect to be completed by February of 2019. Moving on to the fire department, Chief Dean Magus has served the village as the fire chief for the past 17 years. The fire department personnel continually strives for excellence and displays an unparalleled dedication of time and commitment to the safety of our residents. As you probably know, our fire department continues to be staffed using a predominantly paid on call combination staffing model. There are two full-time contract paramedic firefighters who staff the station 24 hours a day, but the majority of the department is staffed by part-time, paid-on-call personnel, regularly responding from home to serve in an on-call capacity. These personnel also sign up to cover specific standby EMS shifts where they don't have to remain in the station, but they commit to being in town and available to assist our full-time paramedic firefighters with medical calls. Our fire Officers also take shifts as the duty officer, where they take home our duty officer response vehicle and are available to respond to various emergencies in the village and assist with some of the daily operations of the department. This staffing model is very challenging at times, but we are all proud that we are still able to sustain this model and provide help to our residents. In fact, this past spring, we conducted a recruitment process and had 27 applicants of which we were able to hire 12 new paid on call personnel. Most of them have a lot of training ahead and we wish them well. Over the past 12 months, the fire department once again responded to nearly 2,200 calls for service. Nearly 1,700 of those responses were requests for emergency medical services and the remaining requests for service were for fires, rescue and a variety of other services. In EMS, we are once again proud to report that this past May, the Loyola EMS system staff honored several of our EMS personnel for the job they did in the field, recognizing them at the Loyola EMS Awards breakfast. The particular incident that they were honored for this year was for the immediate care and transport of a patient suffering a medical emergency who was rapidly deteriorating. Upon arriving at the emergency room, the patient was pulseless. EMS staff assisted ER staff and they were successful in restoring the patient's pulse. There were a few other incidents of note on our personnel responded to in the past year. The last December 26th, we responded to the Homestead Apartments overnight for an activated fire alarm and found a family and their newborn child were able to escape a fire in their garden apartment. Thankfully, the smoke detector alerted them when a candle caught their blinds on fire. In January, we responded to a car that crashed into a home in the 800 block of Newberry. Firefighters utilized rescue tools to shore up the home and extricate the driver from the car. On March 19th at 4.54 a.m., firefighters responded to a fire in home under renovation in the 500 block of Stone. As personnel entered the home, they quickly identified a hole in the living room floor and were able to safely work around it, avoiding significant injury. This past August, the fire department responded to an activated fire alarm at the Dolores Manufacturing Facility. And once we arrived on the scene, we found a fire in a laser cutting room that had been extinguished by a single fire sprinkler. And just last October, we were summoned to LaGrange Road in front of the village market for a very serious crash involving an overturned SUV and a semi truck and a large diesel fuel spill. Our fire department also regularly works with neighboring fire departments in both receiving and providing aid in the form of equipment and personnel, both EMS and fire related. We greatly appreciate those relationships. Some incidents of note where we provided aid in the past year were as follows. We responded to a townhome fire on LaGrange Road 
to the American Beauty Mansion fire in Hinsdale and to a recycling company fire in Forest View that burned for two days. Last March, we responded to assist Westchester with two fires in the same day, once for a small fire in a church and later that night to a significant townhome fire. Over the past year, we also responded to Brookfield for a fire in a restaurant being renovated, a fire at 4 a.m. in the vacant Brookfield bowling alley, and also to a significant early morning house fire in Arthur Avenue, where unfortunately a woman and her dog were killed in the fire. Training remains critical to maintaining and improving the skills of our firefighters and being able to provide an efficient and effective fire response force. In addition to regularly weekly training, many of our personnel are involved in a number of specialized training sessions and events throughout the year. Some activities of note in the past 12 months include a live fire training session held at the Broadview Fire Department where personnel learned how to handle propane gas fires. Personnel also began working with neighboring fire departments and police agencies to understand and train on rescue task force responses, which involves fire and police working together during active threat events in order to provide safe, life-saving care to the most people in the shortest amount of time. Also this past June, we sent personnel to assist the Chicago Fire Department at a disaster drill at Midway Airport where a plane crash was simulated, which was a result of an engine failure upon takeoff. Many of our personnel completed a variety of other classes, including firefighters Andy Chorley and Chad Rupp, who completed paramedic training and became licensed paramedics. One area our personnel take tremendous pride in is the delivery of fire safety education messages and assisting with various public education and village events. As usual, the last year was no exception. The fire department again participated in last year's Veterans Day and Memorial Day ceremonies, played in the Park Junior High Mighty Patriots basketball game, and delivered Santa twice to events, once to Ace Hardware for Small Business Saturday, and a second time to the Holiday in the Park. The Holiday in the Park is where we also provide a holiday safety presentation with the highlight focusing on how fast a fire can spread if your Christmas tree dries out and catches fire. Fire personnel also assisted with the National Light Out and provided presentations to a couple of different sessions of the Citizens Police Academy. Last month was extremely busy as we recognized Fire Prevention Week where we provided fire safety education to all elementary school children and held our annual open house. Although windy, we had great weather for the open house and it was very well attended. We thank everyone who came out that day, as well as all those who helped or supported the event in some way. For example, Jewel donated hot dogs for the day, and Bill's Place donated the buns. And in coordination with a nationwide corporate promotion, LaGrange Park Ace donated 100 smoke detectors that we were able to hand out for free. This past year, firefighters again helped to improve our fire stations. Fire station number two on 31st Street saw the bulk of improvements where our own personnel installed new outdoor lighting on the front of the building and are in the final stages of completing the installation of a new backup generator. Firefighters also completed the installation of a new gear washer extractor, which the station did not have. The extractor is used to regularly clean firefighter protective clothing, which has become identified as being extremely important due to the amount of carcinogens that are now found in smoke and end up penetrating our clothing during fires. One of the major things that occurred this past year in the fire department is that we took delivery of our new Quint ladder truck this past March. Thanks again to the referendum that residents supported in April of 2016. Again, the new truck replaced the 28 year old truck. Personnel visited the manufacturing facility to inspect it during the build process and again to complete final inspection and testing of the truck prior to delivery. Once delivered, personnel spent a great amount of time mounting equipment and training with the vehicle before it could be placed in service. It was officially placed in service on June 4th of this year and so far has lived up to its expectations in regard to overall design and performance. Although it is only a fire truck, it is truly something many of us are very proud of, especially watching it go from concept to a very useful final product. Beyond what some may call routine emergencies, our village also operates an emergency management agency in order to help plan and prepare for responses to major emergencies and disasters. 
In the past year through EMA, we updated our portion of the Cook County Multi-Jurisdictional All Hazards Mitigation Plan, the largest such plan in the country. Also this past February, village staff conducted an emergency management tabletop simulation. The simulation involved a large fire involving flammable and dangerous chemicals, which eventually required resident evacuations and potential environmental contamination. Village officials and village staff worked through the simulated emergency, operating out of our emergency operations center, making sure many critical tasks were handled appropriately and all needed additional resources were obtained. Moving on to the building department, as most of you know, our fire chief, Dean Magus, also supervises the village's building department and as such serves as building commissioner. Patrick Boyle, who serves as our building official and deputy commissioner, handles nearly all of our on-site inspections, helping us out immensely. In addition, our senior fiscal assistant, Allison Chorley, does an enormous amount of work related to organizing and maintaining permits in the building department, and special project coordinator, Forrest Tucker, oversaw the very large downspout disconnect program. Over the past 12 months, the building department issued over 1,000 building permits. Permits for four new single family homes were issued, and 21 permits for residential additions were issued. Also during the past year, over 1,400 inspections were completed. During the past year, the building department, along with help from some other departments, has been working through some very large projects. Earlier this year, the six-story mother house was demolished at the Congregation of St. Joseph to make room for the new two-story assisted living facility currently be constructed on the campus. There was a great deal of coordination that took place in relocating residents between buildings and making sure adequate exits and fire protection were maintained. Also in response to the successful District 95 referendum last year, Brook Park School is currently being vastly expanded with a new large two-story addition. This project is quite interesting based upon its size and the amount of work taking place in and around a fully occupied school. A couple of smaller size projects but big in the eyes of the village, were the building renovations that took place to accommodate the new Postal 31 restaurant and Crown Trophy store, both on 31st Street, and the new dollar store located in the village market. Our building department is also responsible for property maintenance code enforcement, which in some ways can be important to overall village aesthetics and property values. In order to provide additional focus and attention to these efforts, the Village Board recently approved an agreement with a third-party contractor, SafeBuilt, who now provides a part-time contract employee to our department to help with such. That employee, Jasmine Hernandez, works approximately nine hours per week specifically to address and follow up on property maintenance issues. There are a couple of projects that pretty much fall under the scope of the building department that I would like to remind folks about. We still have funding for the village's sewer backup prevention program, where the village can help with some financial assistance to help offset the cost of actions to reduce the potential for raw sewage to back up into your home. In fiscal budget year 2018, the village reimbursed residents nearly $24,000 for this project, and during the current fiscal budget year, we have reimbursed over $11,000 so far. The other program, the Village's Downspout Disconnection Assistance Program, unfortunately ended at the end of October 2018. We thank all of our residents who disconnected their downspouts at this point and congratulate those of you who took part in the reimbursement program. This program, which was funded through an Illinois EPA Green Infrastructure Grant, provided financial assistance to, hun assistance to hundreds of homeowners in the Village totaling several hundred thousand dollars. Although the grant program and its funding have ended, I must remind residents that it is still village ordinance that downspouts must be disconnected from the village's combined sewer system. Moving on to the administration department, Assistant Village Manager Emily Rodman serves as the village's liaison to the business community and works with the village's Commercial Revitalization Committee, or CRC, to enhance the village's economic development efforts. Led by Trustee Jim Cusera, the CRC has been hard at work implementing the Commercial Revitalization Plan, which was adopted in 2013. In 2017, the Village successfully implemented two types of economic development tools. The Village's two-tax incrementing financing districts went into effect in January of last year, 
and the village's four business development districts went to effect on July 1st. These are both financial tools intended to support reinvestment and spur redevelopment in our community. The CRC recently completed a series of field visits to each of the four business districts in order to evaluate and identify opportunities for both short and long-term improvements. As part of a multi-phase process, the village is considering adopting a comprehensive streetscaping program for all of our commercial areas. Last month, the village engaged SB Friedman Development Advisors to conduct market and land analysis for the former Pancake House property, which is now owned by Phillips Flowers. The results of this analysis will assist in identifying viable uses and development concepts for the property. The village's newest restaurant, Postal 31, opened in May and was the first recipient of funding through the 31st Street, Barnsdale, TIF and Business Development District. The village worked closely with the business throughout the planning, development, and construction phases of the project. The village is also currently working with an investor on the redevelopment of the former International Molding Company site on Barnsdale Road for a new store self-storage facility. The owner has applied for funding through the TIF and Business District programs and plans are currently under review. The village has over 100 businesses including banks, retail stores, restaurants, professional and medical offices, and warehousing facilities. As in past years, the village experienced some changes in its business landscape. This year, the village welcomed new businesses, including Dollar Tree at the Village Market, Crown Trophy on 31st Street, and as previously mentioned, our newest restaurant, Postal 31. The LaGrange Park Chamber, led by President Sherry Sauer and its Board of Directors, continues to grow its membership and to expand its presence in the community. The Chamber provides an excellent opportunity for businesses to become involved in the community and to grow their business at the same time. Each year, the Chamber hosts a variety of business-friendly and family-friendly events, including the Haunted Trolley Trick or Treat, which was held this past October and brought hundreds of children and their families to the village. The Chamber also hosts the annual Holiday in the Park event held each December at the Community Park District Recreation Center. These events are a great opportunity for the entire family to have some fun and support our local business community. Earlier this year, the Village unveiled a new website. The site has important information on Village news and regulations to ensure residents and business owners that they understand and have easy access to all the Village has to offer. The website offers user-friendly features such as the ability for residents to sign up for special notifications and alerts, easily locate financial information on the village through the transparency portal, and review past village board and committee agendas and minutes through the Agenda Center. The website is fully compliant with the American with Disabilities Act, making it easier than ever to use for those with visual impairments. We hope you enjoy the new site. Moving on to the Finance Department, Larry Noller serves the Village as its Finance Director and he manages the Village's daily financial matters. Overall, the Village's General Fund ended the 2018 fiscal year in a stronger financial position than originally budgeted. Revenues were 1% above budget, while expenditures were 3% under budget. The current fiscal year expenditure budget for all funds is $19.7 million including about $3.2 million in spending from the 2016 bond proceeds for road projects. This was also the first year the Village received the Government Finance Officer Association's Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. The award program recognizes local governments that meet the high standards necessary to produce a comprehensive annual financial report. Commonly referred to as CAFR, this document contains much more than the statutory required audit report and includes additional financial and statistical information about the village. A CAFR is considered one of the highest quality financial reports a local government can issue. Less than 6% of cities nationwide received the GFOA's CAFR award. The village's second CAFR was presented to the village board at the October 9th work session and is available on the village's website. The Village will soon begin working on the budget for the next fiscal year, which begins May 1st. The Village staff will be working over the next several months to determine the funding plan to support core Village services for the next year, as well as forecasting for long term.
The process will culminate with several board meetings to review and discuss the draft budget prior to the approval of a final document in April. As always, the challenge for the upcoming budget will be balancing the increasing cost of providing core village services against limited revenues. This challenge has grown in recent years due to the state's financial condition. About 20% of the village's general funding is state shared revenues. Although the state income tax rate was increased in 2017, the local government share was proportionately reduced so that the entire increase goes to the state. Furthermore, the village lost 10% of its income tax revenue last year as part of a one-time cut included in the state's budget plan. This year, the state also included a one-time cut in the budget plan, which reduced the village's share of the income tax by 5%. In prior years, payments of 911 and transportation funding were suspended due to state budget issues. But fortunately, the village maintains adequate reserve funds to weather these types of cuts in the short term. Over the next year, the Finance Department will be researching new sophomore systems. The village's current financial software was originally installed in 1992 and transitioning to a newer system will result in more efficient processes. We will also be looking to include additional internet and mobile applications for residents. And finally, I would like to thank the entire finance team, all of who strive to provide great customer service to residents. Call or visit the Village Hall offices and they will be available to assist with any question you might have regarding Village services from build, building permits to water bills. Moving on to our community partners. The Village has a long history of working closely with our partner taxing bodies, the Community Park District of LaGrange Park and the LaGrange Park Public Library. At this year's State of the Village address in November, we were fortunate to have representatives from both organizations here to share with some of their current and upcoming initiatives. With this program, I will speak from those presentations as written and provided by those organizations. I will start with the Community Park District with the report provided by Alex Brias, the Executive Director of the Community Park District. First, the most exciting item was the reopening of Memorial Park after the improvements were completed. This past summer, we held a dedication for reopening of that park. Representatives from the Village, the Chamber, and Lions Club were in attendance, as well as Village residents. The biggest hit was the opening of the new splash pad. Every time you visit the park, there will be children playing in the water. The Park District did shut down the water on Labor Day, but they look forward to opening it up again on Memorial Day weekend. Another improvement that was recently added to Memorial Park was a rain garden. Located in the northwest corner of the park by the picnic shelter and tennis courts, this garden takes the water runoff from the picnic shelter roof and nearby trail. The garden helps with flood control and removing contaminants from the water as well as beautifying the area. This project was completed in coordination with the village and could not have happened without the help from the Illinois EPA IGIC grant program. Approximately a $14,000 project with the grant reimbursement, it only cost the district about $2,000 to install. The Park District is grateful for the community and for the state's support. Next, we had two longtime employees retire from the district this past year, Peggy Ranowski and Roy Rogers. Peggy was the face of the front desk. As the office manager and HR director, Peggy worked for the district for over 25 years. She seemed to know every resident that entered the front door of the recreation center and always greeted them with a smile. Roy Rogers, the Recreation Center Building's custodian, retired after working for the district over 12 years in a full-time capacity. Roy was an ambassador for the district by greeting participants in and around the Recreation Center and helping guide them to the correct areas for programs, in addition to keeping the facility organized and cleaned. We thank both of them for their many years of service to the district. And they haven't completely left as Peggy brings her grandchildren to district programs and Roy still helps out with the theater programs. And finally, I'd like to highlight the Community Park District's wonderful theater program. The theater program started in 2013. The first production was No Strings Attached that featured a cast of 12 children. Thanks to Recreation Supervisor Dave Romito, the program has grown and flourished. This past year, they put on a production of Aladdin that featured a cast of 125 children and The Little Mermaid, which featured a cast of 136 children. The performances 
are held at Park Junior High's auditorium. We would like to give a big thank you to the school district for letting the Park District use their facilities. In addition to these larger productions, the Park District offers theater classes throughout the year. They put on smaller performances for our summer camps, preschool, and during special events such as our Halloween costume party. The Park District would like to invite you to their next production of Madagascar, which will be running January 11th through the 13th at Park, Park Junior High School. Come support the arts in your community while watching a great show. To finish up, I would like to thank every employee of the district and the Board of Commissioners. They keep our residents busy with programs and maintain our parks and facilities for residents' use. Without these dedicated individuals, our district could not offer all that it does. I will now move on to the library's overview, which was originally presented by Lori Whitman. Lori is the board president of LaGrange Park Public Library. I have spoken to Lori. She is especially proud and honored to share with our community some of the library's accomplishments and initiatives throughout 2018. When people think about a public library, many will immediately picture a space filled with books. Indeed, the LaGrange Park Library has 145,000 items available for residents to check out, including books, movies, music, and video games. New this year, our library now offers the Library of Things, a collection of unique materials and equipment that can be checked out just like traditional materials. These items include a pressure cooker, virtual reality headset, bubble machine, binoculars, and so much more. They even have a bocce ball set that can be checked out and used at the beautiful Memorial Park right next door to the library. Last year, our library welcomed over 120,000 visitors and checked out approximately 563 items each day. The program offerings for all ages soared and reached an all-time high of 19,000 people attending library events. This is due to the efforts of our dedicated staff whose creativity and passion for learning is endless. All four of the library service desks are staffed with helpful and knowledgeable professionals who answer nearly 1,000 questions per month. They provide public computers with online access for all ages and free Wi-Fi for those who prefer to bring their own device. Library meeting rooms are in constant use as groups without a place to meet find a welcoming space in this building. The library finalized the fa facility master plan this past year and presented it to the public in July of 2018. This plan outlines the issues that exist with the current structure and the plans the library board has to repair and renovate the building in the coming years. This facility report can be accessed by visiting the library's website, www.lplibrary.org. The library hosted its first fundraiser in several years this October with Boo Bingo. 55 people attended and helped raise over $2,000 for the library in one night. The library trustees are incredibly grateful for the local businesses who donated to this effort and to the many residents who came out and showed their support. In the coming year, the library looks forward to completing a small renovation to the teen department, working on a service analysis to help us gauge their success in reaching a diverse population and a strong focus on customer service as they strive to offer the best library experience to everyone who walks through their doors. We welcome all of our LaGrange Park residents to stop by the library and learn how they can connect you with informational, cultural, and educational resources. Altogether, there are many exciting things happening throughout our village. The reasons that so many of us love to call LaGrange Park home are evident all around us, thanks to the efforts of many of you. Thank you all for taking the time to watch the State of the Village Address and to those who attended the Village Hall on November 1st. Before we conclude, I would like to take the opportunity to thank my fellow members of the Village Board, along with the many volunteers who serve on Village Committees and Commissions. We are so fortunate to have their leadership and dedication, and I am grateful for the opportunity to serve with them. The list of Village officials who work hard and give us so much of their time to the community, Trustee Scott Messick, Trustee Patty Rocco, Trustee Michael Sheehan, Trustee James Casera, Trustee Bob Lautner, Trustee Jamie Zora, Village Clerk Amanda Seidel. And I would also like to thank you to our consultants who go above and beyond in providing the village excellence and expertise in a number of areas. Our village attorney, Kathleen Keating, and our village engineer, Paul Flood. 
And finally, thanks to LTTV for providing video and broadcasting services for the village. And most of all, thank all of you, our residents, for all that you do to make our community great.